let's look at an example of uh, forces on a body. Let's say, okay, let's say this is this is a wall, and this is a floor. Now then, suppose that I have a ladder. A ladder leaning leaning against the wall okay suppose right suppose that um i have uh the, this wall is a is a perfectly smooth wall so no friction no friction uh, along the wall but this is a, a rough floor so loads of friction okay so that the ladder will not slide you can just lean against the wall okay, the friction will prevent the ladder from sliding. Suppose now that um, this is a uniform ladder so that the center of gravity is at the center here. So this means that we can think of the weight of the ladder, the whole weight of the ladder as just acting at this point. Recall that's how we understand center of gravity. That's the weight. Uh, so shall we say that the weight is maybe 100 newtons. 100 newtons. All right. Now at the wall, at the wall, because there's no uh, friction, so there are, there are no forces along this direction. The only force that is pos possible is a force that is perpendicular to to the wall. And this force has to be perpendicular because the moment it is not perpendicular, the moment we have force at an angle, it means that that force would have a component along the direction of the wall, and that can only come from the friction. Because only friction is along uh, along the wall, but that's not possible because the wall is smooth. Okay, so I'll call this force I'll call this force F. Because we don't know what it it, it is yet. Okay. Now on the ground the ladder okay, the ladder would try to slide down they would try to slide down but because the, the the floor is rough there is friction and the friction would prevent the ladder from sliding down so there would be a friction there would be a friction in along this direction and then being a floor it would have an upward force to support the whole weight of the ladder so, yeah, upward force upward force okay the combined effect of these two forces would be a resultant somewhere along say uh, okay, let's try and draw this Somewhere along that that direction. Okay. Good. Um, so let this force be R. Okay. Uh, I need to be clear down here. 
let me let me uh, go through this again. See the green the green dashed arrows that are drawn. They are meant to explain where where the force um, from the ground comes from. So this part comes from friction, horizontal part. Vertical part um, is the vertical part from from the floor uh, supporting the the weight. Okay. So the combined effect, all right, the resultant of those two forces gives R. So I can just think of R. I can either just think of R itself and forget about the the two uh, components, or I can I can think about the two components and and then forget about R. Okay, so I don't actually have three of these forces at the same time. Okay, I can think of either one R or or the two. Uh, dashed arrows is one or the other okay for now so let me just choose to think about think about r so just to avoid confusion um, let me okay I'll, I'll leave i'll leave that in okay so we know that that there are these three forces we'll we'll ignore the green arrows for now when considering f r and the weight now for the weights uh, I also give it a a symbol. Uh, I'll I'll let it be W. So W is the one hundred newtons. So the so we don't know the actual value of the force except uh that we don't know the magnitude, but we do know the direction. It it must be perpendicular to the wall. So this this must be at ninety degrees. But we know nothing about the R, the the force from the ground. We don't know its direction. We don't know its magnitude. Okay, so that this is a description of this problem. Now the, the next thing that uh, well the, the problem here then is to is to find is to find the force F and find the force R. And what we are given is that we are given that the ladder is at rest. So what this means is that the three forces, these three forces acting on the ladder are in equilibrium. So that's what we know. And and this means that in order to find these forces, we have to make use of these two conditions for e equilibrium. That the resultant force and total moment must be zero. So it's uh this is a particularly tricky uh problem. Now that the resultant force must be zero, uh is uh, a, a little bit easier um, than the total moment, at, at least for now, because we have learned about vector, uh, we have learned about how to add vectors. And right in an earlier video, I've also explained how forces, uh, how when you have three forces in equilibrium, the, vec the, the vectors must form a closed triangle. Okay, this is what I this is what I mean. Think of think of each of this force as a as actual arrow that you can move around. Okay. As an actual object. You can move around but you're not allowed to change this direction. So I'm gonna take this force F and and I'm gonna move it to here. That's my F the crooked arrow that's my F uh, and, and I'm going to take my R and my W the weight and I'm going to move it here as well now the, the the way is to move it until the a tail touches the tip now it doesn't really matter which tail touches which tip All right, you'll see that in the end it must always form a closed triangle. That's that's the whole idea. So uh right, I'm just gonna choose the tail of W to touch the tip of F. So my W arrow will come here. Okay. And now I have finally my R arrow from the ground. So I need to move this. Okay, I need to move this. So it's 
tail and this tail and there's only one tip left down here so the tail touches here and its tip then has to touch the tail of f now the reason why its tip has to touch the tail of f is because the three arrows have to form a closed triangle in order that these three forces are in equilibrium. So this is the um, a method which we saw earlier, uh, a result that we saw earlier uh, in another in another video. Okay, so we have this description here. Now sometimes when you have a triangle like that, it might be enough to solve the problem by using uh, maybe either Pythagoras theorem or or actually by drawing a scale diagram but in this case probably not but let's see what uh, information we have on this anyway we have that this is a right angle uh, meaning that the force is horizontal the weight is vertical so so this is a right angle here okay horizontal vertical and we also have um, the magnitude for w which is 100 newtons that's the magnitude of this we don't know f we don't know r we don't have the angles either right? we don't have this angle we don't have that angle so so there's not enough information to solve this triangle so in order to 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 find f and r or, and, and the angles we need more information and we do have another part to this method that the total moment must be zero In this case, we have forces in, in all different directions. They're not just pointing up or down. Okay, they, are, they can be slanted and then this one is slanted. So it's, it's a little bit more tricky to find the total moments in this case. Right. Now, but we are going to try anyway. We'll try. Now, the important point, an, an, an important detail about this total moment is the detail that is not mentioned. Okay, is that the moment, the total moment can be taken about about any point, any pivot. So this means that we need to decide on a point to be the pivot. Okay, just any imaginary point and as I mentioned uh, earlier in the last video it might or would probably be useful to choose a point at one of the uh, choose the pivot at one of the forces reason being that if you do that then the moment from that force is zero and things become easier now I have three forces here which should I choose? Okay. Now it's not always obvious, but in this case, there is actually an obvious choice. What's the obvious choice? Okay. Let's let's see how to decide. Now you have um this weight, which which we know we know force. We know the magnitude and direction. With this force, we know the force. Uh, we don't know the magnitude, but we know the direction. It's horizontal, and then we have this force. It is uh, we know nothing. Okay, we don't know its magnitude. We don't know its direction. Now, one good choice, uh, one choice that that might be good, is to pick the pivot at this force at this point. That means pick the pivot at the force that we know the least about right? if we know nothing about this force we don't know the magnitude we don't know the paper uh, direction right it might actually be best to pick the pivot here pick this point as my pivot but why is that why should i pick a pivot at a point where at a force that i know nothing about the answer is very simple because if i pick my pivot there then the moment due to this force is zero. And that means that I don't have to worry about it at all. And that's that's very good because I know nothing about it. 
Okay, so if I don't have to worry about it, then then uh, I'm left with other forces that I know something about. Maybe I can. Maybe it's easier to then find the problem. All right. Hopefully things will, will get easier from this point. So choosing this as the pivot. All right. Let us then look at those two forces and see what we can see if we can find. Uh, in this case, we're just left with f as unknown. See if we can find f. Um, okay. Now we need some more information here. Actually, we should right for for finding moments. We need to know about distances. So I've not given the any distance yet. So let me say that the the distance from this point, the the bottom of the ladder, to the corner of the wall. Let me say uh, it is one meter. I'm just going to make things easy by calling this one meter as well. So let's say top of the ladder from the ground is also one meter. Okay. So yeah. We can try and write down the total moment. Right, the total moment. I'm going to do it a bit more directly. In this case, there are, since there are only two forces, I can I can just think about um, anti-clockwise moment equals to clockwise moment. So I don't have to worry about giving signs to clockwise or anti-clockwise directions, and then having to solve do some algebra to the equation of that. So I'm just going to sit, uh, start by writing down the clockwise moment. First, okay. this moment. Now I have the two forces. That's my pivot. Okay, and I have this force, the hundred newton force from the weights, and I have this unknown f. The weight will have a right a, a clockwise turning effect about about pivot p. The, the force from the wall would have a anti-clockwise turning effect. Okay. So there I have my clockwise and anti-clockwise. So the clockwise turning effect from the weight would be um, the moment would be the force. The force. Uh, okay, let me write this down. Clockwise. So clockwise and my anti-clockwise. Anti-clockwise. Just gonna call it clock with the dots. Okay. My clockwise from the weight will be this hundred newtons. One hundred times. Since we are finding moments, we need the perpendicular distance from the pivot to the line of action of the force. Remember, not not the distance from pivot to the point of action, but we need to draw a straight line through the force. And find the perpendicular distance from the pivot to the line of action. So this distance, right, let's see. What is this distance? We know that the distance from P to the corner of the wall is one meter. And we are taking this to be a uniform ladder, so the center of gravity is right at the center. So therefore, therefore the distance here should be half a meter. So times 0 0.5. Okay, so this distance, this distance should be half a meter. So there, I have my clockwise moment, hundred times point five. Next, to find the anti-clockwise moment from the unknown f, I need to multiply the force f by its perpendicular distance at uh, the perpendicular distance from the pivot to its line of action. Now, it, the line of action of F would be this straight line that we can draw over. We can draw along it. Okay. So from pivot to this line of action, that would be this distance, wouldn't it? This distance. Perpendicular. So this distance is just the one meter, right? That was given. So that's one. And now, if you look at this equation that we we have just written down, we can actually solve for the f. 
And on the right side, f times 1 is just f, and on the left side, 0.5 times 100 is 50. And since this is false, the answer is in Newton. f is 50 newtons. We have just found f. Right, you and all using this this total moment equal to zero condition, and it it was actually quite straightforward, and we had a simple equation. So having found f, we are now ready to find r. Okay. Now there are there are uh, I suppose more than one way to find it. But let's maybe okay. Let's look at this vector triangle. We can probably use this vector triangle. We have now got a new piece of information. If you if you recall, we only knew just now. We only only knew that uh, W the weight was hundred newton. But now we also know that the force F is fifty newton. So that this is fifty newton. So now that I know. This side is 50, that side is 100, and I also know this, this right angle here. I can use the Pythagoras theorem to find r. So let me do that. So therefore, therefore, um, r is equal to the square root of um, 100 squared plus 50 squared um, and I suppose we can use a calculator and find an answer I'm just going to write this down in insert form just so I just saw um, something quick to write down let's see if I factor out a 50 that will be a 2 squared, which is 4 plus 1, and so that's fine. Okay, that, that will do for now. And we, we know a force has to be described by both its magnitude and direction. So to get the full answer, we really need to find a direction, a direction as well. So for example, if I want, say, the angle between this force and the ground, right? say I want, I want to know this angle theta, now on the triangle, it corresponds to this angle. See, you can see this this part is symmetrical to that part, and I can find theta um, by say uh, once again using this right angle triangle. Tangent of theta is is this side is the hundred divided by fifty. So so theta therefore is the inverse tangent. Of hundred over fifty. Okay, so again, this is something that we can find from our calculator. Number of degrees. Now, finally, um, before I finish, I'm just going to mention something that. Could be useful sometimes. Let's see if I can do some magic to this picture. Okay, I'm going to make them disappear. Going, going, going. Yeah. Disappearing. Okay, so back to my original picture. Now, what I um, want to mention just before I finish is is this. Suppose I have these three forces, I have these three forces, and they are in equilibrium. All right. Suppose I know that they're in equilibrium. Uh, if you like, by the simple fact that the the ladder is there, it doesn't move. Okay, just because I can see the ladder not moving, I know they must be in equilibrium. I know they must be in equilibrium, otherwise the ladder would move. Now there is some there, there's a simple um, uh, property about these three vectors that that 
this condition, this condition that the total moment is zero, tells us. Now we are, we already seen the other geometrical property, right? That that these three factors form a triangle, and that that's what that tells us, tells us. So the resultant force uh, equal to zero gave us that triangle. Uh, maybe I should draw draw that again. This gave us our, our triangle. Um, Okay, that's the F, that's the W, that's the R. So that, the, okay, this, this is my W and this is my R. So the total moment, uh, a total force equal to zero gave us this vector triangle. Now this, this total moment zero gave, actually gave us a, a, non, a, a geometrical property as well. Now here is what it gives us. Because the total moment is zero, this means that these three forces, if I draw their lines of actions, if I draw the lines going along the three forces, and this line, these three lines must actually pass through the same point. Okay, this is a very uh, very specific property, right? They have to pass through the, the same point, and the reason for that is that if they pass through the if they all pass through the same point, right? When you take the total, when you take the moment about that point, you must get zero because the distance from of, of the point. From the point to all three lines of action would then be zero. That therefore the moments of all three forces have to be zero. So this is um, this is the if you like the the geometrical property that this condition tells us. All three forces go. Through the same point. Okay. Well, of course, this only works when we we have three forces. If you have four or more forces, things are more complicated. But these properties sometimes give us a, a useful way to solve problems. Just like we have seen how we can use the, the vector triangle.